Hello and welcome back. My name is Ahmed Al Jawad. I'm the CCNA instructor for TechPix.net. I'm happy to be the instructor for CCNA. I'm excited. Welcome to the second uh, lesson of the CCNA series. As a reminder, uh, last series we uh, last video we talked about uh, the introduction of how to be network engineer uh, and other things. And as I said, this kind of going to be a little different of all the training out there I'm going to act as a training as a as a student who is going to find his resources on the internet on YouTube and on Google and I'm going to focus more on the uh, hands-on uh, configuration and what you might be facing in your real life like after you be certified so we'll come back we'll come to text picks and uh, I'm going to uh, upload these videos to the free CCN training on the textbooks.net soon today after I finish this and uh, hope you guys will enjoy it so second thing let me go back to my I finished this already you go the second one is recognize the purpose and function of network devices so as I said we're going to cover the uh, Cisco topics exam topics so we're going here let me go back to the whole path sorry Cisco <coughs> training all training and then in the routing and switching in the routing and switching we are going to do the 100 101 ICND 1 ICND 1 we'll see the exam topics for it right here so first thing recognize the purpose and function of various network device such as a router switch bridge and hubs already have the presentation ready for it but as I said, I hate advertisements. I don't know, maybe that's because I'm using Google Chrome and they're putting a lot of videos advertisements because it's very annoying now. Usually, especially when you are like at work and you don't have like the uh, computer on a mute. So imagine you're in, in your work and you know, as work you're in your cube and there's a lot of people around you. And this comes up and you're like, oh, what the hell. Anyway, please cancel it, Google. Please, that's so annoying. All right, so the first one we're covering recognize the purpose and function of virus network devices such as a router, switch, bridge, and hubs. I already put the presentation for it, but after the third presentation, you guys will see that the presentations will be a little bit different because we are going to focus on how to find the uh, resources on YouTube and on Google, not how to put them together and do it for you because I want you guys to be familiar of how to search on YouTube for everything on how to search on Google, because being a network engineer, you're going to face a lot of problem. You have to troubleshoot them. If you don't know what the solution, you have to Google them. So that's my point. I want you guys to go to Google and YouTube and find the solutions for everything, even for your day-to-day -day or for your uh, certification. That's that's actually the good way of put it together. Actually, is going to uh, teach you from the beginning how to be uh, a good. Uh, I'll say like guy who's a good searcher on on Google. All right, so let's start. Recognize the purpose or function of various devices such as router switches. Again, my name is Ahmed Al Jawad. If you want to contact me, that's my email on TechPix.net. Is Ahmed Al Jawad at TechPix.net. Please mail me if you need anything or you want me to do any specific video for you guys or if you have any question please mail me and I'll do my best email me sorry and I'll do my best to answer all the emails depends if I, if I have a time if it will take me a long time to respond please pardon me excuse me because you know being a senior network engineer a lot of day-to-day -day, uh, job to do and then I have this and then I have to do more certification so thank you for your support please uh, email me and I'll answer so before I go in there, I'm trying to explain something here. 
So let me go, I kind of going to explain it in the paint because I need to draw for you guys what's happening out there. So, before I explain the, uh, you know what, not the paint. Let me go to the Visio. Let me start Visio here. By the way, you guys going to use a lot of Visio in your real life. A lot of it. Visio is a very good uh, program to do the uh, network documentation. You'll need it. I do. I, I use it every day. You have to document all of your equipment. That's just a template for Visio. Delete the templates. Let me go. So, long, long time ago, when they uh, put together the first computer, so a guy who invented the computer, he found, he built the computer, you know, processor, memory, hard drive, screen, input output devices like keyboards, mouse, you know, everything. They put them together and was doing like, you know, calculation and everything. Let me show a guy, let's say his name is John. Bought his first computer. Let's put this. So John bought his first computer and he was happy, you know. His computer was doing calculation, was doing a lot of operation that he was doing it like manually before and that's back in the 1960s, I'll guess, you know. John started using his personal computer. He was happy with the results. He was very happy and everything is working fine. He can do calculation. He can do uh, inventory. He can do everything for his job. And then one of John's co-worker bought another computer. Let's call him Tom. Tom bought a computer, they both work together, let's assume, in any company, and they both have the computer, computer, and they start working on them, they're happy, they both have computer, and then Tom and John sit down together one day, and they goes like, hey, you know, I bought a computer, he goes like, yeah, me too, so what are you doing here with computer, they goes like, you know, I'm doing a lot of calculation, and then they got uh, curious, he goes like, can you show me what you have, and then he goes like, yeah, you can come to me, you know, to my house, and I'll show you what's my computer I can do on my computer. And then they start going, and, you know, they might live far away from each other. And then here's where they start to think of connecting the computer together. They goes like, why are we going, like, all the way to your house to show me your work, and you coming all the way to my house to show you? Like, why are we not connect them to any media? Cable, for example. We'll connect the cable, and you can maybe send me your file, send me your inventor, it could be a text file, show you how I do the calculation, or maybe a basic program, show you how to do the calculation. Because like, okay, they found out in media, you know, of how to transfer media, could be t cable, could be everything, could be wireless, they just put them, put their, the technology, and they start communicate. they start talking to each other, and we are actually going to cover how the, what the protocols, that's the basic computer, the, the computer is actually using to communicate, there is TCP IP, there's a lot of protocols that's going on to establish the communication starting from the layer 2, layer 3, layer 1. And I start talking about layers, we're going to cover layers in the next uh, lesson. Layers, I'll show you what it is it, uh, what it is, and what is the layers, but for now they just start to use media and the protocols because the layers, media and the protocols actually is falling in uh, conceptual layers, so we'll talk about this next time. So they send the file and they were happy, you know, the result, they start sending back and forth of their information and then another guy in their company, his name is, we'll say, me. I came in the middle back in 1960, yeah, I was there. Came in the middle and I started my using my computer, I was so happy I have computer in my house, and blah, 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 and then after I finished work that night, I went to a bar and I, I met Tom and John. And I find out Tom and John, they goes like, oh, we start sending the information back and forth. And I goes like, you know, can, can I be in? Can I join, you know, the communication between you guys? So they goes like, yeah, but, you know, we have one cable. How are we going to send you? You know, can I, like, just put a cable in the middle, for example? Well, no. I cannot just cut the cable and put my cable. Who's going to receive? And depends on what. 
So here's where they start thinking of putting the network equipment together to let the computers communicate with each other and talk to each other. And here comes the first kind of network device that is called hub. The hub. Let's go back and talk about the hub. Here we go. So, what is the hub? Hub is a device for connecting multiple Ethernet devices. See, here is a new thing, Ethernet. So, what is the Ethernet? We're going to cover that next uh, topics. But, let me show you. As I said, I want you guys to go and search. So, anything I put in here, you have to go and see. So, let's go to... Uh, let's go Google what is Ethernet and see if... What is... Ethernet. And let's go to wiki, for example. <clears throat> so that's what that's the thing that I want you guys to usually do is always go and ask what is. I think there's nothing on wiki. Let's just go to wiki.com. Why? Oh, what? What? Wifi? Oh my God! Sorry, guys. Okay. So here we go. Wikipedia. So that's one of the thing I want you guys to do is whenever there is a topic that's kind of not don't understand or not exactly I'm covering it in details because I said I'm not going to cover a lot of things in details so what is Ethernet for now Ethernet is a protocol that's uh, uh, sending the information back and forth so Ethernet is a family of computer network technologies of a local area network Ethernet was commercially introduced in 1980s and blah 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 you know what History standardization, so that is the Ethernet is standardization, not again. You know, and that's the cable that the Ethernet cable was what's called RJ45 or CAT5 cable. We're going to deal a lot of it, and I'm actually planning to show you how to cabling that. That's the NIC interface that you're going to connect to the Ethernet cable, and blah blah blah. Okay, oh, shared media whatever anyway so that's kind of how to find out what the Ethernet multiple Ethernet devices together and making them act as a single network segments network segments we're going to talk about that too but as I said you can go and Wikipedia what is a network segment it has multiple input output ports which is signal introduced at the input of any port appears to be out from every port expect from original incomes how work as at the physical layer as I said the layer which is layer one of the OSI model we're going to cover that I'm going to cover this I'm just going to read a little bit but then I'm going to cover like how's the hub look like what we expecting from the hub and a lot of thing and then in the switching we actually go to cover in details like what the technology is how's the switches how's the hub is uh, Switching the traffic between the ports. What's the difference between hub and switch? We, we're going to cover this here in basics, but then we're going to go like in more details in the switching uh, video. So for now, a hub does not examine or manage any of the traffic that comes through it. Any packets enter any port is rebroadcast to all of the other ports due to the large collision domain. Packets collision are more frequency in the network connecting using hubs and the network connecting more sophisticated devices so we have a couple things to cover here first the hub what is hub first let's see how is the hub look like let's go to I, I want to keep the Wikipedia here the Google picture sorry mine is in Arabic I have to change it Arabic is my uh, native language so hub here we go so if you look for the hub, here's what the hub look like. Usually, I think you know the hub. If you want to connect your like home network together, you go out there to buy more. To sorry, Best Buy, buy more. I'm seeing this uh, season to the series show. It's called Chuck. They he's working in a place called Buy More. It's, I think it's comes such old place, but it just come on my mind anyway. So here's the hub, and there's coming examination of what the hub is doing. So the hub. It's connecting, for example, there's a Netgear hub that has four ports where you can connect actually four computers together and they'll talk to each other. 
they'll send information back and forth so here's what we expecting from the hub how does the hub look like you know a lot of things a lot of uh hub scan there's uh dealing brown head gear you cisco they making switches likely they do have the small like i think uh it's, it's, it's a lynxes lynxes is a uh, cisco owned company they're making like the small and home use equipments small office and home use equipments including hubs um uh, let's see let's look at it for it lynxes hub uh yeah that's the wireless that's wire and wireless that's actually i think that's a router usually that was look like the lynxes router so lynxes is part of cisco but it's not like the actual cisco equipment so this how's the hub look like as i said the hub is does not examine we'll cover that in in uh uh in the switching but in general let's assume that i have hub right here okay i have this hub which has like you know one two three where's the three three four ports that is hub with four ports okay and then let me see if i, I think i can i'm kind of sure what if i copy and paste this to the paint can this working no no oh there's a paste there can i paste it oh yeah good okay so the same guys you know our uh, tom jim and i am you know we came here and we said you know what yeah we cannot just send the same information on the cable so we have to prevent the hub to uh, invent the hub so they comes up with the idea of the hub where they're connecting the computer together so uh but um, let's go back here. Let me take the brush again. So, Tom, sorry, not that good writer in paint. And I think I need mouse because I'm using the pad on my laptop. Tom and John, I'll just put J and Ahmed, which is me. Yeah, okay. So, what's happening? They put together the hub. Ouch. That's hard. I don't know how they do it. The hub, I'll have to bring, here we go. So, John starts sending the file, like, you know, the program or anything, and he want to send it to Tom, okay? He want to send it to Tom, so he put it on the protocols, TCP, IP, and we'll talk about it later, and he sent it with the source of his computer. The destination is Tom computer, and he sent it to the hub. Well, the hub is a dumb device. He don't know what the hell is going on between. What the hub is going to do when he receives the packets from John going to Tom, the hub will not see what's inside the packet. It will not see what the destination or the source uh, address. What the hub is do, it will take that and broadcast it to Ahmed and to whoever guy is, is going there and to Tom. But he's not going to send it back to John, that's the only part is not good to send it. And then you imagine how many how, how many times that the the packet is I just put a new uh term there, it's called packet. We'll talk about it later. Packet is what's this uh switch is uh sending and then we'll go to the frame is what the router is sending. But for now, John starts sending the packet to Tom. The hub received the packet from John the hub is a dumb device you don't know what's going on inside so we'll start sending the packet out of all the active interfaces include ahmed and whoever guy is available here so you know ahmed received the packet this guy uh, jim for example received the packet which is going to tom and tom received the packet too so ahmed saw the packet and he ahmed actually looked at the source and destination uh, MAC address and Ahmed goes like you know I'm not the destination MAC address so he's just going to drop that packet he'll just drop it and then this Jim or uh, what we call him uh, I don't remember anyway that guy he saw the packet and he goes like that's not for me that's not my uh, MAC address so he's dropped the packet 
But Tom received the packet and he goes like, yup, 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 it's me, it's me, here I am. And then he starts sending back the packet. He goes like, yeah, wherever I received or, you know, not received. And imagine that Tom now sending back the traffic to, to Jim. The same thing will happen again because the hub doesn't know what the source and destination IP is. The return traffic will go back again and broadcast to all these ports. So you can imagine how many traffic and overhead is going on. In this environment, this is a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, things going on there. So that is what the hub, and that's what the hub is doing. We'll talk about ecology and domain, and we'll talk about other things. But please, you will have to go and look at what is for now the Ethernet. Not don't just just take a kind of definition and take a look at it. We're going to talk about it more. Just have to with the network segments. We have to talk about it. So. That was like quick brief on the hub. Now is the switch, network switch. It is a computer network device that is used to connect devices together. So it's the same. The hub used to connect devices together too. Why the switch? What the different on a computer network? So now we have the same. They're both they're both connected and computer together. A switch is considered more advanced than a hub because there we go. A switch will only send a message to device that's needed or requested rather than a broadcasted the same message out of the ports so it's more intelligence is actually looking in what we call the MAC address tables that's an example of what the MAC address table right here we'll talk about it more and this considers layer two three four seven I don't know I mean I'm not I don't remember exactly where I got this from I I might be never seen layer seven switch in my real life maybe there is out there I, I actually didn't look into it we'll talk about the layers more but the layer 7 mean that the switch will be application aware device which is kind of more advanced where there's special equipment like the security appliances and others actually they are application aware it's not, not supposed to be the switch but who knows maybe now there is a lot of deployment required the switch to be an application aware device but usually the switch is most likely in the definition the switch is layer 2 device there is switches that has routing capabilities will be layer 3 device and I saw some switches they're layer 4 which means they're kind of knows what the port number we'll talk about more about what the port number what is that just as a definition now that's what you have to know so the difference between switch and hub the switch is more intelligence is actually knows Where's to send the traffic to? Let's go back to these guys here. Um, let's delete them. Oh, I need I need the guys again. Anyway, we'll put together what's happening. So, again, now we have a switch that has let's say the same number of ports. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. So this is a switch now, not a hub with four ports. I don't know why you want me to do it twice and three maybe. Can you? Okay. Anyway so yeah and the same guys here let's go back to my Tom you know what let me get them with the names uh, get on get on so let's get Tom let's get John I'm just bringing the shapes from Visio to the paint just to make it easy just copy paste them that's all I'm doing just you know point out item and then go and copy just control C and then paste here that's easy and we need another guy so just to make it four because minimum we have is a four port we don't have less so whoever this guy called so now the switch what is the, the difference this is this uh, I need the brushes so this is the switch nah not good not good writing so this is the switch still not good but yeah that's S guys that's not 5 okay anyway so now they came with more advanced idea where they goes like you know what we're generating a lot of traffic by using hub and that's actually eating up all the available bandwidth and making a lot of overhead and delay 
and collision there is collision and there is we'll talk about the collision and how that's happening what's the solution for it we're talking about it later so now they put the together a uh, switch so first time Tom sending packet with source and destination the switch received the packet the switch will come to his MAC address table show MAC address table that's actually uh, a command on Cisco equipment so the switch will come to his MAC address table and he will look into the packet and he will look all the MAC addresses he will look at the source MAC address or also at destination MAC address and he of course he will put the source so for example let's say that Tom MAC addresses you know MAC address have to be some kind of format like you know A B wherever C but it comes in um, I'll show you exactly how it look like it look like like this exactly you see it's, it's 4 4 and 4 so we'll talk exactly how the MAC address look like just I don't want to go in the details now you just have to, to know so the switch will actually look at the, the source and MAC address so put the source and associated the source to this port where it's Tom and it will look at the destination the first time when he could find the destination on in his address table what it's going to do is actually going to forward the packet just like the hub and the first time only to all of his active devices and he goes like are you John with MAC address are you John are you John and he's replying nope I'm not nope I'm not and he's dropping the packet John will reply, he goes like, yes, I am John, and that's my MAC address. The switch now will put his MAC address and associate it with the port. So next time, when Tom sending traffic to John, the switch will find the entry of John's MAC address in the MAC address table and send it just to this port. It's not going to forward the traffic to all of the other ports. So that saves us a lot of uh, bandwidth, a lot of overhead, and a lot of things. So that is a very good idea and that's actually what we're going to deal with and here are some uh, sketches shown actually the difference between the hub and the switch so you look here it is here it is the uh, oh, sorry I have to go back where 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 okay so here oh gosh where 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 alright so here it is uh, you know what like this so this is switch then this hub Okay, here's switch and here's hub, and I have to make it bigger just so you can see. So each port of the switch is 10 megabit per second, and that's the Ethernet switch. If it's fast Ethernet, will be 100 megabit per second. If it's a gig, will be gig. We'll go through that again later. So now that's we'll we'll assume that is an Ethernet capable switch, which has 10 megabit per second on each port. So when you're connecting the computer directly to a port each computer will get a hundred meg uh, 10 megabit per second for each one and then if you connect the hub to the port the port is 10 meg going to the hub the hub has three computer so each computer will take 3.3 3.3 why because they're actually sharing the same uh, 10 meg so that's shared media that what it calls it's called shared media so that's the difference now they're sharing the same bandwidth on the port here everybody will take uh, the whole bandwidth and that's actually there's a cost behind it sometimes you you, you don't have a choice just to put hub in there because you want to save some cost of the port if you don't have enough ports you have to extend to a hub and the hub will take yeah sometimes it's work okay sometimes not depends on how much bandwidth the each user need and use you have to analyze and figure out like what kind of application he's used if he's using normal like HTTP or maybe using FTP and sending a lot of uh, application it depends so anyway so what is the switch look like what is Cisco switch Cisco has a big family of switches and that's an example that's the Catalyst Switch 2960. We'll go to the details now on Cisco.com. That's actually the uh, enterprise uh, family of 45 or 65. They kind of look like the same. Or you have 
a lot of modules of switch what we call like each slot of these is switch modules and there is supervisor engine is very advanced switch you will have to know how to learn to, to deal with it it's kind of the same not the same operating system in, in general there is a lot of difference there's a lot of new technology on this one but it's still you're going to deal with kind of the same uh, command line interface and configure them with the same basics that's the Nexus uh, family that's the Nexus 7018 I think which is the data center grade switch that's for data center environment only it's used a lot of fiber connections and everything on it for you to get more information for the switches and you have to do that because you have to know what kind of switches like if you go to any uh, con any network and they ask you to buy a switch you can go to all of Cisco uh, products all the products you have to know different kind of the switches and what their capabilities what the difference you know what they have to do and kind of put this towards your environment and what's your need so here they put them in a very good organized way it depends on what you want what you want from the switch so I mean for now we're kind of going to deal with uh, the combat line and core and distribution switch which is include the 2960 one of the most common available switch on uh, Cisco mm, where is the 2960 it looks like it's not here let's go to the all product well, thing is not I'm not in the right family I have to find it do 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 2960 what's up a commercial hate you oh data center switch there's a fire switch ethernet virtual now come on where do you guys put it now okay yeah access switch combat LAN. x switch i was here but i still couldn't find him oh here we go yeah so catalyze 2960 kind of the most used and we are actually going to do a lot of training on it and there's a lot of different models you have to compare models and see what each model is uh, included you know here we go there's 2960s what the difference you could see like that's the part number 2960 WS 2960 48 port FP that's an include two SFPs SFPs is the uh, upper fiber link you're going to use for your fiber connection to the upper switches and that's like all the different kind we have to cover them later I, I don't want you to get in into this now we are going to cover them later okay there's 2960 XR which is different uh, feature sets and there's other as I said the uh, 4500 series 6500 series what they're going like here 4500 series ethernet switches different kind of switches a lot of products Cisco have you kind of have to be familiar with all kind and difference of the equipment they have so you can you know understand what's going on okay 